happy Friday morning. This is Dr. Karen Bondar, and I just wanted to experiment with the idea of um, putting it out there. Ask some, ask and answer questions every Friday morning. I will make a video and answer some of them. And um, this was an idea that uh, my colleagues and I, or my colleague and I, thought of just today, today this week. So uh, I won't have a full episode ready for you today. But what I do have is uh, a short commentary because a lot of people were immediately writing in with questions and concerns about racism and whether racism exists in the animal kingdom and whether the notion of race is even an actual biological entity. And I think um, what I'd like to do just for this week is to quote a paper that came out last year, last summer, in the um, American Association for Physical Anthropology Journal. It was written by a friend of mine, Augustin Fuentes. We did a show together once where we were looking at animal relationships and Augustin was a really great character to have in that show because he's a, an anthropologist at Notre Dame <clears throat> and somebody who knows a lot about um, what's going on in terms of what race is and means to us. And so I thought that I would just call up his paper and read you the executive summary because I think it's a really, really good statement uh, that answers to, answers, speaks to some of those questions that people have been asking this week. So this is, yeah, from the, this is the AP, AAPA Statement on Race and Racism from the 14th of June, 2019 um, in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology. Here we go. Race does not provide an accurate representation of human biological variation. It was never accurate in the past, and it remains inaccurate when referencing contemporary human populations. Humans are not divided biologically into distinct continental types or racial genetic clusters. Instead, the Western concept of race must be understood as a classification system that emerged from and in support of <clears throat> European colonialism, oppression, and discrimination. Because of that, over the last five centuries, race has become a social reality that structures societies and how we experience the world. In this regard, race is real, as is racism, and both of those have real biological consequences. So I'll just pause and step out of that article for a second to just say that race isn't a thing, but this belief system based on this non-thing is a thing. Got that? Next paragraph. Humans share the vast majority, 99.9%, .9%, guys, <laughs> of our DNA in common with each other. Individuals nevertheless exhibit substantial genetic and phenotypic variability. Um, that means we look different from each other based be, in spite of the fact that we have the same DNA. Genome and environmental interactions, local and regional biological changes through time, and genetic exchange among populations have produced the biological diversity we see in humans today. Notably, Variants are not distributed across our species in a matter that maps clearly onto socially recognized racial groups. That makes sense, because race isn't a thing. This is true even for aspects of human variation that we frequently emphasize in discussions of race, such as facial features, skin color, and hair type. No group of people is or has ever been biologically homogenous or pure. Uh, furthermore, human populations are not and have never been biologically discrete, truly isolated, or fixed. One more paragraph here just to, to round out the executive summary of this article, the statement on racism from the American Association of Physical Anthropologists. While race does not accurately represent the patterns of human biological diversity, an abundance of scientific research demonstrates that racism, this prejudice against, prejudice against someone because of their race and a belief in the inherent superiority and inferiority of someone of different racial groups, affects our biology, health, and well-being. This means that race, while not 
a scientifically accurate biological concept, not even a concept, scientifically, can have important biological consequences because of the effects of racism. So a thing that's a non-entity becomes an entity only in the fact that people are utilizing their desire to believe in it. The belief in races as a natural aspect of human biology and the institutional and structural inequities, racism, that have emerged in tandem with such beliefs in European colonial contexts are among the most damaging elements in human societies. Okay, once again, that is a, a statement that was co-authored and headed uh, by a friend of mine, Augustin Fuentes, who is a, um, an anthropologist at Notre Dame, and that is their thoughts on racism and, uh, and what, it, what the biological construct of it is. We don't have racism in biology because we don't consider animal populations that way. We might consider aspects of natural populations that vary if that population exists in one part of the world. And then in another pop part, we might sort of look at, wow, what are they eating? What are they eating? How are they? When are they mating? What are they mating? Um, but those are still the same species. And so it's really, really interesting to me that this week so many people have asked about racism. And it's just something that is entirely a human-based construct. So that's uh, something for this week. I will look forward to all of your questions next week and to just uh, opening the floor and having cool discussions uh, about these kind of topics. Cheers. Thank you.